OPC UA is the definition of point-to-point -point integration. The problem with OPC UA is that OPC tries to be everything to everyone, and therefore it's ineffective at basically everything. It serves a purpose, but its purpose is on the edge. You're not going to build an IAOT infrastructure leveraging OPC UA. The well, reason Eric, we know this- Eric, who works for Microsoft and is part of the OPC UA Foundation, seems to think differently. Eric Barnstadt, what you are saying is not true. You are literally misinforming the community. OPC UA absolutely 100% without a doubt is not the future digital transformation. And I am so confident of that, that I am happy to do competing projects against an OPC UA disciple where we'll use the MQTT infrastructure, you'll use the OPC UA infrastructure and we can crush you, I promise you. All right, so I want to share this. This is kind of frustrating, but I wanted to bring it to your attention, Walker, because I don't know if you had seen this, but uh, the, this I saw on LinkedIn the other day, the world's first OP OPC UA worldwide implementation. They implemented over this thing called TSN. I'm not exactly sure what that means, mm -hmm. but what I do know is OPC UA is heavyweight. And I, I had, you know, I brought up a point. I shared Jeff Nepper's article about how OPC UA versus MQTT is like one one hundredth at the, you know, on the high side, maybe one twenty fifth on the at worst, the payload size, and then someone replied, you know, saying that oh, it's old. I guess the test was ran a few years ago, but you know, the last I checked, that the OPC UA spec hasn't changed in the last two years, so it's still heavyweight. And whether or not, if even if you implement it pub sub, it's still a heavyweight, right? So even if you add in this new thing called TSN, which I don't know why what the difference is, but I don't know why you would want the world's first OP OPC UA implementation worldwide. I mean, that's not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> there is no, there is no OPC UA implementation worldwide. The problem with OPC is there's a lot of reasons it's, and, and it had, it serves a purpose, but its purpose is on the edge. There's no implementation that's going to be successful leveraging OPC UA across the wide area network, especially at an enterprise level. It doesn't mean that you can't, you know, use a OPC server client connection over wide area network for a select number of tags, right? You can't, I mean, of course you can do that. People do that all the time. You're not going to build an IOT infrastructure leveraging OPC UA. It, you're just not. I mean, it's, it, it's, and the well, reason Eric, we know this. Eric, who works for Microsoft and is part of the OPC UA foundation seems to think differently. Well, Eric's an idiot. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, um, he was saying, he failed to realize I was comparing it to MQTT, which is not. And, I, and when I open. say idiot, I don't mean that Eric is not smart. What I'm saying is an well, idiot look, is didn't even an idiot. The... An idiot is somebody who tries to speak knowledgeably on a subject that they are not knowledge knowledgeable. And here's on. what he said: It is really sad to see so many folks that are still playing old tapes and continuing to compare proprietary solutions, which MQTT is not proprietary. So why I don't know open. why he said that. Solutions to open standards, while at the same time locking users. Yeah, he, he's absolutely right there. But he he's incorrect when he is comparing uh, MQTT to OPC UA as one being open and one being vendor locked. Here, here's the problem with OPC UA, and I, I mean, let's we can just have Eric on the podcast and just talk to him about it. Yeah, yeah. I I think that what's probably happening. Oh, oh well, I mean, if his argument is that OPC UA is the future of digital transformation, then all he's got to do is come look at one of our solutions, and I'll ask him, show me how you're going to do this with OPC UA. Mm -hmm. That's all we got to do. Yeah. There was a couple of OPC UA architecture drawings. I, I, that... But after reading his conversation, though, I mean, here's the problem. You see this? So much of the OP, right. I mean, come on. <laughs> so much of the OPC UA standard is optional. I mean, this is something they just recently, well, actually, this one's from 2016. Oh, OB, OPC UA, guys, listen, let me, OPC, this is a new UA, one. OPC UA is the definition of point to point integration. It's literally the definition of point to point. I said, oh man, this is a fat check for an industry 3.0 integrator. <laughs> yeah. It's a huge amount of money there. Yeah. Um, and right, and he, I mean, he's still using, he's still using a modified Purdue security model, you know, and still using that triangle, by the way, it's not a triangle. It's inverted. It, it's a trapezoid. It actually gets bigger as you go up, not smaller. <laughs> um, and it gets bigger as you move up the stack, not smaller, by the way. 
Um, and it, because what you're doing is adding context. As fair, you go I don't, up the stack. That wasn't a reference drawing that he shared, but that's right. just but OPC. Let me, let me, I want to talk about the, let me just real quick talk about this. I don't think that he is saying that he believes anything different than what we believe. Okay. He, he's making the argument that you should use open architecture technology to help organizations digitally transform. Here's the problem with what he's proposing. He's proposing that OPC UA is the standard by which you should, you should unlock potential on the plant floor. It doesn't scale because it, OPC UA is only open architecture if you know what the architecture is. OPC UA is not stateful. It, OPC UA, the model can't tell you, I have specifically written OPC clients myself, okay? I probably, I know the standard inside and out. And anyone I speak to who knows the standard inside and out, the first thing they say is, why the heck is this so verbose? One of the first things you say, I mean, to just go ahead and, and browse, say, three levels, uh, they call them, I can't remember what they call them in their standard, but... Um, we actually have a comment on their OPC video that I want to bring up. The, the problem with OPC UA is that it, I think in Matt, I think Matt Paris is the one who said this OPC tries to be everything to everyone. And therefore it is nothing. It, it's ineffective at, at basically everything. The OPC use, the issue that oh, the OPC foundation has is that they have tons and tons of technical debt in their, in their specification in order for them to become lightweight edge driven report by exception truly lightweight edge driven report by exception they would not be able to um oh that's eric that's eric that's that's freaking eric dude that's him eric bonster instead that's correct yeah, yeah. the information he, provided is, is, yeah he said it's just, incorrect let's just have him on what, what was the video this is is OPC UA the future of IoT, and he said he, he, that, Eric Barnstead is wrong, and I and I I assure you he will not come on the podcast with me. I promise you he won't. But I I'm happy to have him on. Microsoft he, has standardized not, on not, OPC UA. He and isn't going to risk. He isn't he isn't going to risk looking like an idiot. But I'm happy to have him on. He said OPC UA is both lightweight. It is not perform. lightweight or performant. Neither that I, I whoever were. Wherever he works, those things are simply not true. I mean, just because he says OPC UA is lightweight and performant doesn't make it so. I've done the benchmarks. I'm not even the only one. We had it peer reviewed. We had we had our benchmarks peer reviewed. Peer reviewed. Okay, I'm not the only person who's benchmarked OPC UA versus MQTT. There's a half dozen guys all over the world who've done it. Um, yeah, what I'm going to share this video and tag. What he's <laughs> saying is simply not true. Eric Barnstart, what you are Barnstat, what you are saying is not true. You are literally misinforming the community. And I challenge you to come on the podcast and I'm happy to have a very detailed our motivation discussion. is I, I would even clear. sketch, I would even write out on the board, I, I even write out on a whiteboard exactly what I mean when I say OPC UA is verbose. And what we, you would we, tell me, you're gonna tell me the same thing Stefan Hopp told me. You're going to tell me the same thing the guys from Sesame told me. You're going to say the exact same thing. Oh, we're all collaborating right now, trying to figure out ways to make the OPC US standard, UA standard more, more uh, um, less verbose. That's the first thing you're going to say. When I ask you why is 75% of the standard optional, why is it that there's a gazillion models in there that you have to scan for, by the way, on the client side, you got to look for them, even if they don't exist. That's the definition of verbosity by the way <laughs> even if the model isn't there i still got to look for it okay you know it's like and and, if, and the person who implements their opc client their opc server the the problem with the standard is that if somebody creates a spark plug b connector let's say they create a spark plug b client i know exactly what i'm going to get okay i'm going to get a group id i'm going to get an edge id and i'm going to get a device id if I get if I get a an edge ID, I know I got a group ID. If I get a device ID, I know I got a group ID and an edge ID. I know I got those things. Here are the optional components of Spark Plug B. I can send models or not send models. I can compress or not compress. I can encrypt or not encrypt. Other than that, other than that, there's nothing else optional about the standard. Three friggin' things. 
And if OPCUA is so amazing, okay, this is how, if OPCUA is so amazing, then why did Phillips 66 pay IBM and Arlen Nipper at Cirrus Link to develop MQTT? If OPCUA is so amazing, then why did Phillips 66, by the way, Phillips 66 entire infrastructure is MQTT. Why did Facebook use MQTT for Facebook Messenger and they didn't pick OPCUA? Because it's not stateful. You know those little ellipses that you see when you were text messaging? Same thing with Apple. You want to see those little ellipses your, friend, your friends are typing? That's only because you're using a stateful protocol. OPCUA is not stateful. In, in, but in PubSub, is it? Guess what, guess what the PubSub recommendation for OPCUA is? Use our standard for the data model. Use, use the data model that's 75% optional and then publish it over MQTT. That's literally verbose. what the friggin' PubSub standard says. <laughs> so why would I do that? Why so would I- So then why do you need o o OPC UA is what you're saying. Why do I need the OPC UA modeling engine? Why do I need if 75% of it's optional? And MQTT Listen, serves our purposes just fine. It, 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 it far, I can, if you, <laughs> I, mean, I'm by, I mean that metaphorically. I mean it metaphorically. You, let's say, let, and I do this all the time. I put my money where my mouth is all the time. You don't want to get demonetized, I, dude. Yeah, I, no. What I meant was, I will, you know, like wipe the floor with you in a developing session. Yeah, wipe the floor with you in a development sense. If if I and I'm not mad at this Eric guy. What I am saying is, is that he is he is speaking about things he definitely does not know. It, the fact that he said OPCUA is lightweight and performant is simply not true. It is absolutely the opposite of that statement. It's the opposite of that statement. OPC UA has a place and that place is on the edge and it's nowhere else. There I would, I would like for him to come on the podcast and explain, because here's my point. Here's my point with, I strongly believe that he be probably believes what we believe because he, he is focused on open architecture and not having vendor lock. He clearly misunderstands what MQTT actually is. This is just like the conversation I had with um, the guy who owns real time automation. He does the newsletter four times a year. He, he wrote the Mia Culpa on LinkedIn um, six months ago. Said John uh, Rinaldi. John Rinaldi. John Rinaldi and I met. Here's a perfect example. Rinaldi is a diehard. In fact, real-time automation makes, they make Modbus. They have a gateway. Actually, I have a couple of them over there. They make Modbus to OPC UA um, gateways, okay? And John Rinaldi and I met at the, at, um, the ARC show in Orlando, maybe three years ago now. And, you know, and this was back when I was really one of the few people who was preaching MQTT all the time. I was kind of, you know, I was preaching it to basically nobody. Um, the, um, yeah, Matt, you don't. Matt asked a question. How do you do self-discovery with OPC UA? You don't. You cannot make a self-aware SCADA system using OPC UA. That's the reason why he brought it's, that question up. It, right. It, it's, it's, all, it's all server side. You cannot make a self-aware infrastructure using OPC UA. The, it is deterministic. The server has to know what exists in the field. The server's got to know what's out there already. The, what's out there already can't tell you what exists. And that's one, one of the reasons we moved to MQTT. But anyway, I met with Rinaldi in Orlando a few years ago, and he, was, and he, he had written a piece in December. So I met with him in February. He'd written in his newsletter in December why OPC UA is the future of IOT and not MQTT. And in fact, he said MQTT is a, you know, it's, it's, um, it, it's not robust enough. It's, you know, he, he basically listed out, you know, all the reasons that probably this, this Eric guy would say John Rinaldi. I didn't talk to John again after, after that meeting, it was a very spirited discussion. And I, and I said to him, John, you're a smart guy. You are absolutely going to come around. I promise you, I don't have any doubt you will come around. Because you get it. I mean, and you're a guy, two years later, he writes a, a public mea culpa on, posts, and posts a newsletter on LinkedIn saying, I was wrong. And he listed out all the reasons, okay? This guy will come to the exact same conclusion. It, it's not, I don't have, I don't own MQTT. I don't even necessarily get along with the Sirius Link guys all that well. I mean, I don't get along with them badly, but. We're not buddies. I don't talk to those guys all the time. I push this technology because it's what's best for U.S. manufacturers to help them digitally transform. And OPC UA absolutely 100% without a doubt 
is not the future of digital transformation. And I am so confident of that, that I am happy to do competing projects against an OPC UA disciple where we'll use the MQTT infrastructure, you'll use the OPC UA infrastructure, and we can crush you, I promise you. Not only will I do it faster, not only will we do it faster, not only will we provide higher value, we're gonna do it for less money, and we are, we'll be able to scale faster, and we'll be far, 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 far more lightweight. I mean, it's just, it's an apples, to, it, it's apples and oranges, I'm telling you. you OPC UA, simply cannot compete with MQTT Spark Plug B as an infrastructure. It, and you can prove this empirically. We don't even have to do the project. It's just simply guys, not true. Guys, if we missed your questions, right, leave them in the Discord. Rant, man. Join, <laughs> you, join, you did that on purpose. You did that on purpose. <laughs> join the, the, the viewership started to go up there. Join the Industry 4.0 Community Discord server. Guys, join the Mastermind program. It's it's a it's a large investment, but when you break it out over a year and you look at where you're gonna go, anyone who's joining, you guys are supporting this right here and it really helps out make this content possible let, for you guys. And so let me you. say something, because I, I assure you what will almost certainly happen, we will have a conversation and we will have a meeting of the minds. We will come to consensus. I don't have any doubt about that. Because he makes some he makes some statements in there that tells me he does he does get it. He understands, he does get it. There, it's almost certainly that he has a misconception of what MQTT is, and he has, has he doesn't do the types of projects that we're doing. I mean, he just simply doesn't, probably because he doesn't believe they're possible because he uses OPC UA all the time. Appreciate you guys.